Hello, I'm Angelo Ford, host of Modeling Life in Cars. Today we're going to be taking a look at the first car that I ever owned, a 1977 Smokey and the Bandit Pontiac Trans Am. On this web series, I build scale models of vehicles that I've owned, driven, and personally flown. I bought this 1977 Trans Am when I was just 15 years old. I was working in a deli and I'd saved up about $1,800 to buy this car off of a neighbor. And I was so excited, I couldn't wait to get my license. I'd sit in the backyard, sit in the car, and every now and then I'd go for a ride around the block uh, when I was, you know, just couldn't resist the temptation. When I'm building a scale model, I'll typically unpack the parts, not really in any particular fashion. I'll save that later on when I organize them into the way I'm actually going to build it. This model's got some great decals. It's got what I like to call the fire chicken, you know, the Trans Am uh, Firebird. It's got some great uh, dashboard decals and then some nice trim as well. This Trans Am was such a great looking car. It had the uh, intakes on the side of the fenders and the rear spoiler. It was just a beautiful vehicle. When I'm building a model, I like to review the instructions. I'll usually just do a quick one through. You have a uh, interior and exterior, drivetrain, exhaust, chassis. They're pretty much always the same, but again, I like to look through them each time. I noticed that the uh, Engine heads and the manifold are all one piece in this model, and seeing them really brings back some memories. When I owned this car, I was going to a trade school, and we were allowed to bring our own projects in, uh, as long as we were in good standing, and I was. So I brought my heads and my manifold into the machine shop, and it ported them out, cleaned them up, you know, um, painted everything real nice and then brought them back home, put them back on the car, bolted them on. Really had no idea what I was doing with vehicles at the time. It was a totally learn as you go situation. But it was, it was so great to have my own car that I could experiment on as a kid. And uh, the automotive school that I went to was great, man. It kept me out of so much trouble as a teenager in Massachusetts. So many things that I could have got into and got in trouble with. But uh, being in a trade school really helped set me on a good solid path. So I'm getting ready to paint on the sprues and sometimes you don't really have the right color that matches exactly and if you want to be authentic go ahead and buy it off the internet or go to your local hobby shop or you can mix something that's close enough. That's usually what I do. I'm really building these models to what a kind of memory was, not an exact replica. But uh, you know don't feel tied in that you have to do that. Have fun with the models, mix a couple together. You know Pontiac Blue is a very specific color. It's pretty close to this one. I don't, I'm not going to sit there and look for the exact one. I'll take this blue and I'll mix a little silver with it to get what I'm going for. So I'll dip my brush in just enough to get the bristles wet and then I'll dip, dab it on the top of the cap and then I'll just paint the instructions a little bit to see how the flow is coming off the brush. So I've put on a base layer on most of the parts and now I'm going through with a slightly different color. So if I'm using steel then I use aluminum or if I'm using aluminum then I might use like a uh, a chromium, uh, just to give the different shades on the parts. You know, as I'm painting the dashboard here and working on the interior, it just reminds me of how cheap the actual car was, you know. This was built in the 70s and it was like this foam plasticky stuff. It was probably all the rage at the time. But by the time I had owned the car, it was falling apart. The foam was coming through, there were cracks everywhere. You know, anywhere that sun touched was basically cracked and exposed. I still loved it and I was looking forward to driving it as my first car. Eh just wouldn't turn out that way in the future. But that's more to come. You know, some days uh, I was living with my aunt at the time. You know, she had adopted me from my mother who had moved to Arizona. And uh, sometimes it was just crazy. So I would go out to the car and I'd do my homework out there and I'd just sit there and listen to the radio, you know, uh, 94.5 or Kiss 108 FM at the time. It's before satellite radio, obviously. And I'd just chill out there, you know, on a winter day, the car would get covered with snow. And sometimes I'd fall asleep in the car. Even though I didn't actually get to drive it with a license, it still was great to have and, you know, just be a part of my life at that time. You know, this car had a really cool steering wheel. It was like leather on the side or pleather, I guess. And it was probably super cool when it was brand new. But, you know, it was torn up pretty well. And that was pretty much the theme of the car. Everything, you know, it had like plastic ingrained stitches in the seats and, and just cheap coatings and platings on things where if they had put in a little bit more money it would have been just top-notch you know sports car but 
it ended up being, you know, the typical uh, throwback to the 70s. A lot of times when I have one paint color out and I know there's only one or two things that need to be painted on another sprue, I'll just go ahead and do those even though I'm not in that section. So right now I'm painting the interior and I was doing the gold on the dashboard and I just jumped over to do the gold trim that's going to be on the front lights as well. So this model, you can see here that it has the catalytic converter with the pipes in the way back and that just wasn't cutting it for me, you know. So I ordered a uh, custom exhaust from, I believe it was Summit Racing back in the day. And the boxes came in, there were so many parts, I had no idea where they all went. I just decided to make my own little straight back system with what I had. But it was so loud and so legal. I should have known better, you know. Uh, but I took the car for a drive anyway, down the street one night as usual. And I was coming northbound back up from my drive, and a police officer was heading southbound back towards the police station. And, you know, I don't know if it was not having plates on the car or the super loud exhaust that set him off, but when we had passed each other, his lights came right on, you know, and I, my immediate reaction was just to slam the gas pedal to the floor, turning gasoline into noise and pure power. You know, gas was so cheap, you didn't care that the speedometer was going up and the fuel gauge was going in the other direction. You were just getting away from that police officer. So as soon as I got to the end of the street, you know, I quickly looked back to see where he was and he was just barely turning around with his lights coming towards me. So I quickly turned around the corner and I pulled into somebody's driveway, turned off the lights. And I just waited and prayed that he would drive right by or go the other direction or something. And it seemed like an eternity, but sure enough, he came whizzing by with his lights on. And when he did and the lights were out of my sight, I quickly pulled out and snuck back into my own driveway put the car back in the apartment building parking lot, and that was the end of it for me. You know, I learned my lesson, or at least I thought I did, because uh, the car sat for a while, but I was back up to my old shenanigans in a few weeks. But it was, a, it was one of those experiences, man, where it just spooked me enough that I uh, really thought about changing my ways. One of the big downsides about this car was how hard it was to actually drive in the snow. You know, it had a posi traction rear end, and what that means is that one wheel was spinning, the rear axle would send and redistribute the power to the other wheel, and then that one would try to take traction. If it started spinning, it would send it back the other way, back and forth. And uh, it was great for, you know, some instances, but in most instances in the snow in Massachusetts, it was actually terrible, because it just sent the rear end of a car like this that had so much power spinning in every which way. So I got so scared out on the roads, you know, fishtailing back and forth in these situations that I just said, that's enough. The risk wasn't worth it. I drove the car home, put it behind the apartment building, covered it up, and I'd go out there and work on it every now and then. But for the most part, it just sat in the winter storms. So the car was sitting in the parking lot out behind the apartment building and uh, it was, you know, a real heavy snowstorm one day and a 
plow truck had come through and didn't see the car and just smashed right into the front bumper. When I came out and found it, there were pieces everywhere. The front bumper was off, you know, the front uh, left wheel was just completely smashed in, the whole front fender was totally torn apart. And when I questioned the plow company, they said, oh, we didn't know anything about it, you know, the plow driver didn't uh, report anything about hitting a car. And really, I was just left holding a car in a million pieces. So in the end, I decided to part the car out and sell it off in pieces. I pulled the engine and kept that for myself. 6.6 .6 liter Pontiac engine I thought might come in handy someday. So I used an engine hoist, pulled it out, put it in my aunt's basement. The wheels and tires I sold for about 250 bucks. I sold the hood scoop to a friend that was going to put it on his Camaro for about 50 bucks. I ended up pulling the rear end out as well, sold that off for about $150. And the same for the T-tops. They were in good shape, so I ended up selling those off to another friend that had a Trans Am, same year, and uh, he was able to put those on his. I remember getting about 150 bucks for those. I got 200 from the um, junkyard that decided to come out and pull the car for scrap. All in, I ended up making about $1,000 of my 1800 that I had spent on it back. So, you know, it wasn't too much of a loss, about 800 bucks. You know, the amount of time that I did spend in the car joyriding back and forth up and down Summer Street, it was worth 800 bucks in, in, in retrospect. That was the end of the 1977 Pontiac Trans Am, Smokey and the Plow. But for the model, we're going to put it up on the shelf all with these little pieces. In the next episode, we're going to be building my second car, which was a 1986 Trans Am. GTA edition, it was all black. It's a great car, I got lots of stories about it. I couldn't find a model for it, so what I did find is this uh, 1986 die cast. And I'm going to completely disassemble it, paint it the right color, and then put it back together uh, to represent my car that I actually owned. We'll do that in the next episode of Modeling Life in Cars. Be sure to check us out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and our Patreon channel. Thanks again for tuning in.